Many people don't know this, but my first foray into tabletop wargaming was actually the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. It was my gateway drug, if you will, into the world of tabletop wargaming. I've kept all my miniatures from when I was about 16 years old. In fact, I still have the original box set that I bought, the Two Towers, when it came out, way back in the early 2000s. So recently, when Games Workshop told us they were releasing a new version of the starter set based around the Battle of Askeliath, and was willing to send us an early copy, I got really excited, and I may have gone a little overboard. You see, since our channel has started, I have always wanted to bring Lord of the Rings to our channel for at least one game, try it out, see if people like it. It is one of my favorite games, and I feel like it is one of Games Workshop's best design systems. Though we had lofty ambitions of doing like a whole campaign system or something like that, we decided to settle with one game. One game to test out the system on the channel, see how it goes, but to do so, we needed a proper table. Now, Warhammer tables don't quite work. You can't really use the same ruins you would for an Imperial City as you would for the Battle of Askeliath. So I thought, I gotta start from scratch. We've gotta build this entire thing in one week. The game's being recorded at the end of this week and it has to be ready for them. There's no other option. Now, when I was 16, when I first started this game, I made some really basic Lord of the Rings terrain. I built my first Hobbit house, for instance. I've grown a lot since then, and I felt it was time to take on a challenge. And I may have taken on more than I could. See, at the same time as trying to build this table in time for our battle, a whole lot of things were happening at Play On. We were in the midst of a merchandise campaign and a level up campaign. I was in the middle of editing several videos and it wasn't the most easy task to find time to build a table to show off this game. There was no way I was gonna let this opportunity to get Lord of the Rings on our channel pass. So I needed some help, and I was able to bring together a whole community of people to help me build this. A local painter by the name of Charles offered to paint both armies and supply both armies so they were painted to a high degree, and went to work with very little time and achieved amazing results. If you're interested, check out his Instagram or Facebook or even send him an email. All that information can be found in the description below. So me and my team got to work of trying to build an amazing battle table. We wanted something that was functional, yet modular. Also allowed us to do a battle report for Lord of the Rings, show it off well, while not blocking any of the major action from camera, which is actually a hard task to do. You can't have too many big giant things because then the camera can't see the miniatures actually play the game. It's actually a very delicate balance to build a table for the camera. My team worked with me to do an amazing job and I'm really excited for how it's going. So far we've planned out where it could go. We've got a big center courtyard, a bridge, the water, the roads, and a bunch of ruined buildings that we're painting up and trying to make it look as close to the movies as we can. At the same time as all the plans are going on for this, I see a little notification pop up in the YouTube studio. And I noticed that Zorpazorp, another YouTube channel that focuses on Lord of the Rings strategy battle content is also decided to build an Askeliath table. Because why not? It makes sense with a coming starter box. However, now I'm intimidated as well as under the gun because Zorpazorp's tables are amazing. He is specialized in making beautiful tables, cinema quality dioramas to play Lord of the Rings on. Some of the biggest, beautifulest tables I've ever seen. And I've gotta go up against that. I don't know if I can do that, but I'm gonna try. If you haven't checked out his channel, I highly suggest checking it out. Zorpazorp makes some beautiful terrain, mostly based upon Lord of the Rings, and you can see a lot of really great content there. Give him a watch, give him a subscribe, give him a like, and then come back and tell me if I even got close. So we're gonna play the Battle of Askeliath on this table. In the movies and in the books, Askeliath was defended by the warriors of Minas Tirith, commanded by Faramir, son of Denethor, one of the last true leaders of Gondor. In the in the middle of the night, a massive force of orcs from Mordor come across the river on boats, dive into the city, and invade the city proper. Faramir holds valiantly, but eventually has to withdraw. We're gonna try to recreate that battle right here. To recreate that battle, I'm gonna need a shoreline where boats can go, I'm gonna need the ruined bridge, I'm gonna need lots of ruined buildings, I'm gonna need streets and roads and places to fight, as well as tons and tons of ruined walls. This new Askeliath box set comes with some ruined Gondor buildings that frankly I think are some of the best terrain Games Workshop has come out with. 
It's incredibly modular. I really, really like it. I'm actually really impressed with the design. It goes together really well. If I have one quibble, I really wish the doors opened. They're, they're molded on so they don't open back and forth. So that's, that's one thing I wish they had done. But other than that, it's an incredibly versatile kit allowing you to build whatever kind of terrain we want. We've got a whole bunch of those kits to build what we can, plus a whole bunch of 3D printed terrain, some old Askeleth ruins, and good old fashioned sand, rocks, and even some modeling clay. I'm gonna try these rollers from Green Stuff World to try to make roads and courtyards that look like flagstones. It's 24 hour air drying clay that I'm then gonna glue down to the board, cover with sand, prime, and then paint and flock to try to make it look as realistic as possible. I've also gotta weather these buildings, prime them, paint them, weather them, dry brush them, and figure out a perfect layout to make this game as cinematic as I can. It's now the third day of the team working on this board. We've managed to assemble most of the buildings from the terrain, lots of cutting, lots of gluing. I have super glue stuck to all of my fingers. I've rolled out the clay, I've used the green stuff rollers, I've planned out where all the buildings go, I've started to do some of the priming and dry brushing on the buildings. The very next step, I have to put down the gravel and glue all the roads down. But I only really have two evenings to work on this and finish it off. Because we game on this in two days, and I still have a day job and a family to take care of. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. This is the last night. We're playing on this tomorrow and we're nowhere near done. I'm using a heat gun to try to speed things along. Now at least we get to one of my favorite stages, dry brushing. It's such an effective way to have a lot of effect really quickly. And it looks so cool. I love dry brushing, it's awesome! We have done it. It is complete. It is one o'clock in the morning. We've run out of white paint. However, it is done. I am incredibly proud of what our team has been able to put together in such a short amount of time. This was a project done over three and a half evenings and I'm incredibly happy with how it looks. I can't wait to play on this in the morning. A big thank you to Jin and Brent from the West Coast Hobbits for helping me with this build. You guys were amazing. And another big thank you to Games Workshop, Andrew and Jamie for sending me this stuff early so I could put it on this channel. I can't wait to show you the battle. And of course, until we see you next time, as always, play on.